Here in New York City, where people are normally skeptical about weather warnings uh, and everything else, after Sandy, the defiance is dramatically diminished, which is justified. Take a look at the numbers. More than 600,000 customers in the dark, including 400,000 in Connecticut. ABC's John Schriffen is out on Long Island in New York, which had massive power problems post-Sandy. John, how's it looking right now? Well, Dan, right now we're seeing about 10,000 power outages. That's because the power company says this time around, they were ready for the worst. When the storm started, we had those painful ice pellets being whipped around in the strong winds. Now it progressed to this soft, fluffy snow. But as you can see, we have almost two feet of this stuff here on Long Island, and it is not easy to clear this snow out of the way. It is pretty tough here. Now, because there is so much snow covering trees, covering power lines, hundreds of power crews from all around the country, as far away as Michigan, even Canada were called in to deal with this weather that's wreaking havoc. Overnight, the snowstorm intensified, blanketing parts of Long Island under more than a foot of snow. Okay, go. Push it. Go. Cars stranded on the Long Island Expressway were stopped dead in their tracks when road conditions became too dangerous. As residents wake up this morning, some are finding their lights won't go on. And the local power company expects the number of power outages to pile up to more than 100,000 customers. Some who went more than a week in the dark after Superstorm Sandy aren't sure how long the power will be out this time. Couldn't get much worse, so we're hoping for the best. Over in the Rockaway section of New York City, it's a similar feeling of here we go again. This home was flooded during Sandy, forcing Sheila Forsmythe out for six weeks. But this time, she's staying put. It's a little disheartening that we're getting just hit and hit and hit. Learning the hard way, many decided to stock up on ice and gasoline for the generator. Back out on Long Island, National Grid, who controls the power lines here, says this time around, their response will be faster because they, too, have learned their lesson, making sure crews were in place before the snow started falling. What part of this storm concerns you the most? It's not only a snow and a potential wet snow, but winds in excess of 60 miles an hour. Now it's up to crews like this team called in from Ontario, Canada to go to work. When the poles are down on the ground, that's when this piece of equipment comes out. Dig a hole, put a new pole in. And that process, how long does that take? Could be hours, could be minutes, depends on where it is. And these crews who have been called in from out of town say they have no clue how long they will be here. The power company says most customers can expect their power to go on within 24 hours after they report it going out. Biana? 24 hours is better than the weeks they didn't have power post Sandy. All right, John, thank you.